So I've messed around with EFI configuration for a slightly different reason, though it might be relevant to your issue. Whenever I set up a VM for UEFI, I don't create an EFI disk just because I don't like having the extra clutter. But what that means is EFI variables do not persist across VM shutdown. So things like the default boot entry uh, get lost as soon as the VM shut down, and then the next time the VM loads, it can't find its EFI loader and it won't boot. So I'm going to walk through how I address that and see if that helps with what you're looking at. What I've got here is a fresh VM uh, where I've just installed OpenMediaVault. Uh, it looks like it's pretty standard fare with a Debian installer. So I want to walk through one reboot of this, because right now it, ha it does have the EFI variable. And if I just continue it from this point, let it reboot, I just want to show what it does with that uh, variable. So this would be like an example of where it's working on a source machine. And then we'll see what happens when I shut down and clear the variables, and then how I go about uh, resolving that. So there, we've already made it to Grub, so the EFI loader's working. We'll give that a second to boot. And we should get dropped in at a login for Open Media Vault. There we go. So, one quick thing to look at. I'm going to look at the variables now. And of course, that's not installed by default. There we go. So just running EFI boot MGR, we can see we've got this entry 5 at the bottom, Debian. So basically this is an EFI variable to point it at the EFI loader that Debian has installed. And in fact, if I do a dash V, uh, we can see that's specifically pointing at EFI slash Debian slash Grub x64 EFI. So that's the thing that the firmware has to know about in order for the for the loading to work. And that's the thing that's going to go away as soon as I shut down this VM. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm also, so the screen will be blank for a second. I've got to go and remove the C, the install CD so we see what happens when it uh, has nothing to boot to. All right, that's done. Start the VM back up. and grab the console. Should have been a little quicker on that. Let me do this real quick. So, I mean, we can see that message. So this is looks similar to what you had in your post. I'm gonna do one reset so we see the full boot. I mean, there's not really a whole lot more to see. It's It doesn't do anything prior to that. It just wasn't quick enough on the load. Anyhow, so this is where we sit. So now we've got a non-booting VM, again, in my case, because I don't save the EF, EFI vars, but at any rate, um, in Proxmox, I guess it's using OVMF for the uh, UFI firmware. Basically, it can't find an EFI loader, and so that's it. It stalls out. The way I go about fixing this is there is a thing. It's the so basically in EFI, there's this idea of the removal media path. That's essentially a default path. So it's EFI boot boot x64, as opposed to what we were just looking at, which is EFI Debian something or other. So, knowing that this default exists, and in EFI firmware and in OVMF as well, um, it will search that even if there's no boot variable set. So my workaround for this is I simply copy the loader to this path, and then there's something for it to find when it boots, and then everything goes on its merry way. Um, in order to fix that, though, since now we've got a non-booting system, um, we need to get into some kind of live environment. Uh, the thing that I like for that is uh, System Rescue CD, this systemrescue.org. Uh, this ISO here is what I'm going to use. So let me get that loaded up and then I'll reset the VM. All right, there's that. And a reset. There we go. So just uh, System Rescue default options are fine. Let me get the mouse over there and there we go. Give that a second to boot. All right, let's take a look at the drive. 
so basically um, we can see the the open media vault install I just uh, put in place whatever partitions it created the only one I'm concerned with is the EFI partition which is uh, SDA1 so we need to mount that because we need to get into it and move the uh, EFI loader around so I'm just going to make a mount any folder I'm just going to make uh, MNT and then mount dev SDA1 MNT CD MNT and tree. So there's the path we're looking at. The only thing it put in there, so the only thing Debian created was just this EFI slash Debian slash grub x64 EFI. And what we want, so that's the path we have, and that's the path we want. So I'm going to set that up. So again, we're looking at there, so we need to be inside of the EFI folder. We need to make a folder called boot, jump into boot, and then we need to copy. So we're, we're still going to use the same loader that Debian was using. We're just putting it in a different location. So we want to reach up a level Debian grub x64 EFI, but we need to change its name to boot x64 EFI. There we go. So that's what the directory structure looks like now. So again, all we've done is created a folder under EFI called boot, and then copied grub x64 EFI over to boot x64 EFI. So that should satisfy the path needed by the, I guess, quote unquote, removable media path, the default. And now, even though we still don't have, so we still don't have that boot entry, so our boot entry 5 for Debian has not magically come back. That's still gone, and as far as I'm concerned, it's gone forever. And I don't care, I'm just going to use the default path. So I'm going to shut this environment down and remove the ISO. So when I power this on, let me see if I can move it over to the screen quick enough. There we go. And I mean, there we go. So. Uh, again, the firmware just tries that default path. It finds a loader, and now everything is back underway. Go ahead and let it um, finish booting just so we see it, just so we get back to a working open media vault. So, once again, no, um, you know, we still don't have that entry, but we are back to a working system. Um, one thing I will point out is this method is technically not recommended because using that removable media path uh, would break things like dual boot. But as far as I'm concerned, this is a single OS, the only OS that is ever going to be in this VM. So I don't care if you know no other OS can boot because I'm never going to put one there. If you did want to put that boot entry back, that could be done. Um, basically, it would be this. Um, just change the path to point to the one we were using. Well, what technically would be the the Debian one and whatever that name was. Um, that would be the that would be the right way to do it. But of course, if you did that, the VM itself would have to have an EFI disk. So that would have had to have been created or at least added later. Um, so the VM has a place to put EFI variables so they survive after shutdown. So technically that would be the right way to fix it. Uh, but for me, I'm perfectly happy using the default path. That way I never have to think about EFI variables ever again and it should just work.